Peak represents our other top tier sponsor, and it's John O'Key from Associations. Well, he's been longer in IT than I exist, so I'm not going to wrap that up. <laughs> John, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, it was kind of interesting when Travis said, well, I'm not quite 40. <laughs> um, I'm not quite 70. <laughs> and uh, I'm still going. Small talk is fun. So um, before I talk about uh, VA small talk, um, I need to talk about the company itself because there's been a fairly dramatic change in instantiations as a company uh, just in the last month. I think the, um, this business arrangement was uh, concluded uh, the 4th of August. And um, you know, instantiations has been around a long time as, as a company. Um, its, uh, its roots were in small talk development tools. Um, it got bought. It got spun off. Um, it um, decided that um, the small talk tools it developed were really good, and why not do them for Java also? Um, so the company redid them for Java, and the company grew. And uh, then they redid them for Eclipse, and the company grew some more. And Google decided that they really liked these tools. They've, Google has been using them for about four years, and they decided they were so good that they would buy the company instead of just buy the tools. And um, so they bought the Java part of instantiations. And those of us in the small talk side were so happy um, because we no longer compete for attention from our management. Um, I report directly to the CEO of the company now. And uh, so we took the money and went back to our roots, and we are now a small talk only company. And uh, so our focus is on small talk. And as a small talk only company, we definitely intend to grow. We are going to be hiring. Uh, my. Uh, my CEO has given me permission to write job recs, so um, you will see those um, in the next month or so show up. Uh, we're looking for really good people, not just experienced people, but people maybe just out of college so that uh, we can grow them in our way of doing things. So VA small talk, onward and upward. That's our new motto. And it's what's on our new website. Um, we have an entirely different website because we had to get rid of all that Java stuff. And because there were more Java tools than small talk tools by volume, uh, most of the website was all about Java. So now it's all about small talk. And we love it. Um, I want to talk just, just a little bit about um, what's happened in the last year. Uh, which was VA Small Talk 802, uh, because I'm more interested in focusing on where we're going than where we've been. It's always, always I think, more interesting to know where somebody's <coughs> going. So uh, in May of 2010, um, we announced and delivered version 802, which included Seaside 3.0 update. This was uh, kind of the Alpha 5 level. Uh, our initial release of Glorp, uh, platform concurrency and enhancements, uh, database uh, concurrency and enhancements. I'll talk about each of these just for a second. Uh, class library enhancements, uh, SUnit 4.0, thank you, Neil, uh, for that, uh, that we included, and documentation updates. Um, I don't need to spend but just a second on Seaside because I expect most people here know what Seaside is, so I'm, I'm just going to say that um, we have participated in the open source activity, um, have been at the Seaside Sprints. I've, I've been there for the ones that when I've been in Europe. And um, we have, we have the, um, the Seaside 3.0 scheduled for our next release. That is the 3.0 that was uh, closed and blessed uh, earlier this week. Um, I want to talk just for a second about um, a website uh, called uh, Vast Goodies. Uh, I've talked about this website before. Um, 
I think last year, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, Adrian Van Oss, who's sitting here in the front row, uh, the primary uh, uh, developer, not the only developer, but the primary developer of this, uh, of this website. And um, Louis Andres, who's uh, sitting across the, uh, across the aisle from him, the, uh, the IT manager at, uh, I don't remember the name of your new, uh, your new company, Aura, Aura uh, who actually uh, sponsored this activity. Uh, so Vast Goodies is a place where uh, community uh, generated additions to, to VA Smalltalk uh, can be deposited for sharing. And this was the very first uh, Seaside application built with uh, VA Smalltalk. And uh, it's been up and running for uh, something over a year now. Year and a half, Adrian says. I'll take your word for it. So I would, I would encourage those of you who use VA Smalltalk um, to uh, look for interesting things there because there's a lot of really interesting things. And uh, to, uh, if you have something interesting to contribute, please do. Um, this, is, this is actually a, a kind of an old screenshot that I got from, from Louie. Uh, this is not the, the most recent thing, but um, Aura is, a, uh, is a, a strong user of Seaside in their, uh, in their application development. And um, so, uh, this just shows some of the, uh, just a, a quick shot of what they're doing. Um, I do need to caution you that, uh, as I've said before, currently we do not support um, call or continuations or wait in Seaside. Um, 8.03 isn't out yet, so I can't, I can't swear that this slide will still be true when 803 comes out, but I'm not going to swear it's not going to be true either. There are, there are workarounds for this, uh, for, um, this deficiency, uh, and uh, they're actually covered in the, uh, in the Seaside book um, as to uh, what to do uh, in this situation. Uh, the vast majority of Seaside applications can be built without using call answer just fine, as, as we see from the, uh, our customers who build uh, production applications. Um, just, a, just a word about GLORP. GLORP is an open source uh, OR database mapping layer, and uh, we have uh, an initial implementation of it uh, that uh, we shipped in 802. Um, we're working on, on uh, improvements to it. Uh, and you will see improvements in as we move through the releases. Um, we've, we've upgraded our support uh, on, uh, on Unix and Windows. You know, every release, the operating systems move and we, we have to move with them. Um, in, in many cases, because our, uh, our testing environments all run in VMware, uh, we, are, uh, we are constrained by, uh, by our testing environment. Uh, based on what VMware supports, so that's actually why uh, Ubuntu 10 isn't on the list because VMware support for Ubuntu 10 only came out just recently. Um, we have uh, we have s digitally signed our Windows executables. We have people who uh, need to have Windows logo applications built. Their applications have to be Windows logo. And this is one of the requirements, is that all executables be digitally signed. Um, power management is an interesting thing. Um, so everybody knows if you have a laptop and you close the lid, it goes to sleep. But what happens to your application when that happens? Uh, well, if you don't recognize the notion of, uh, of these power management events, bad things happen to your application, or can happen to your application. So uh, we have added support for uh, recognizing and handling these, uh, these events uh, in uh, VA Smalltalk. And, and one place where this can be useful is, uh, you know, if you, if you run on a laptop and you close it, uh, you might notice when you open it up again that 
your image has trouble connecting to the manager in many cases. And um, this is something, this uh, sort of recovery of management connection is something that could be handled by one of these power management events. Um, we've upgraded support, so we support Oracle 11. We support Oracle function calls now. It used to be that you needed to wrap function calls and stored procedures in order to use them. So this is very important to people who want to do function calls because they have uh, their applications designed around being able to do Oracle function calls. Um, we also added support for anonymous blocks. This uh, provides the ability to send user, user data types into, into the database instead of, or instead of just Oracle predefined data types. Um, we added method pragmas. Um, actually, um, Julian Fitzell did, the, uh, did a first uh, sort of prototype implementation of this, and then uh, I uh, folded it into the product, making a few changes along the way. We discovered that uh, uh, the way Julian did it initially and the way I uh, folded it in initially uh, caused some uh, fairly significant performance problems to the product because we were storing the pragmas in the first uh, literal slot instead of the last. And um, our, our bytecode set at least uh, has special uh, bytecodes to handle the first four slots. So by putting the pragmas in there, we were stealing one of the high efficiency slots. So it was easier to put it in the front, but much better to put it at the end. Um, we did some work on the, um, on our exception handling mechanism. As, uh, as those of you who use VA Smalltalk know, we were originally an instance-based exception handling system. We added class-based um, for ANSI support, um, but the two have been, up to now, fairly disjoint. The class-based used some of the instance-based mechanisms, but you couldn't really combine the two. You couldn't have uh, say, an exception set that contained both class and instance-based exceptions. And um, based on uh, um, trying to do some support for GLORP, which uh, needed to use both, um, we, we uh, put back in the code that uh, we had originally in VA 6.0 and took out in 6.01 because it was so totally broken nobody could use it. Uh, life has gone on and we're better, I guess, at designing some of these things, so it's back in. Um, S-Unit, uh, Neil added um, just-in-time resources, which is a really cool thing because instead of having to do setup all the time and tear down all the time, the test cases themselves will identify when they need their setups and those, those resources will be created when they're needed. Um, also, um, the, um, the test resource class now lives in, uh, in the uh, test, sort of the test asserter hierarchy. Test asserter is a new super class of test case so that test resources can also uh, participate in um, the assertion framework so you can test to see that your resources are actually working right also. Um, we did, uh, we did many documentation updates. We are, uh, we're getting pretty good at this now. Um, this, was, this was all kind of new to us because uh, we, had, uh, we had gone to a new uh, documentation framework um, because um, the system that we used to use was impossible. Even IBM couldn't figure that out. So it had been a long time since we'd done doc updates. So now, where are we going? That's the interesting stuff. Um, our future releases. Uh, we, we plan on doing two releases a year. You, you, know, they, you know, it could be a major release or a maintenance release. We don't, we don't so much differentiate between them at this point. Um, we don't expect our users to pick up every release, but if we have something, uh, we want to make it available. And our development to uh, sort of our development process is built around this uh, because we work in three-month time boxes. So halfway to a release date, 
uh, you know, we kind of take a checkpoint and say, where are we? Are we going to, you know, what are we going to have for the next release? And then we have the next three months to actually make that happen. Next release is in November. Um, Seaside 3.0 uh, version that was closed this week, maybe with continuations. Depends uh, what else I have to do. Um, we have an internal tool that's been wandering around for years and years and years um, called mes uh, message extraction. And the notion of this is um, we, we have customers who uh, provide their applications in multiple languages. And it's really convenient if they can write their code with their strings in whatever language they happen to be programming in, English, German, whatever, uh, and then extract them to a message file. And that message file is the mechanism for um, translation of language, of, of messages in the system. So this internal tool will, will go through your source code. It will extract and build a message file from your strings. Or if it's a string that, uh, say, for example, is used in uh, some syntactical construct uh, that you don't want translated, it will tag it with a comment, so the next time you run the tool, it won't uh, it won't bother with it. And uh, finally, now that we have the new VMware, we're going to Ubuntu uh, 10.04 and Fedora 13. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of the near term uh, uh, release November. Um, our priority technologies. Well, this is a long list uh, of uh, of bullets. Mm. So I'm, I'm going to try and go through these real quick, one at a time. If you see something you like, yay. If you don't, if you don't, if you see something, if you don't see something that you want, uh, I'm here. Tell me about it. Uh, I, I am the guy to tell. Oh my God, it's Unicode. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. I make a joke about it, but I do stand up in front of conferences. I, I don't know, you know, Adrian's been at just about every one I've been at lately, so he can maybe tell better than I can how many times I've got Unicode on my charts in the futures. <laughs> but um, you actually, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I kind of enjoy going on after Arden because uh, he makes part of my presentation for me. You know, he talked about uh, some of the difficulties of doing Unicode and, um, in terms of the need to Unicodeize the uh, the VM itself, not just the image library, and um, yeah, we're we're sorting through those uh, those issues. Um, Seaside, there will be a Seaside 3.1. I'm convinced of it, and we'll be there. We're we're playing in that game. Um, Multi-part forms for uploads. Um, web service tooling improvements. Our, our web service tools now are mainly workspaces, and, and we want to, and we're we're gradually converting them to GUI tools. Uh, we need some debugging tools in that area. We re, we've written um, a cookbook section in our documentation with debugging tips on web services, but now we need to to turn some of those tips into actual tooling, and a validating XML parser. Our, our current XML parser only validates as much as it needs to for its own uh, purposes. Um, GUI look and feel. Um, the other thing that people always ask me when I'm here is when are we going to do anything about the way the product looks on Linux? Well, I'm happy to say we are going to do something about that. Um, we have uh, submitted a project that has been approved, uh, and we are working with the Hasso Plotner Institute to do GTK plus bindings for VA Smalltalk. Uh, I hope next year uh, maybe uh, some of the students from uh, HPI can be here and talk about uh, this, and we can show it. And, uh, we're really excited about this opportunity. This is our first foray into working with universities, and uh, we really want to do more of this. We're, you know, but we're just kind of sticking our toe into it at this point. 
hoping that uh, that it will be successful. So this is a really exciting thing for us. On, on the Windows side, we have, uh, uh, we support a lot of the common controls, but not all of them. Uh, and we want to, to uh, add support for those other common controls. And some of them actually overlap with things that you see in GTK Plus, so we can bring more things up to the common level across both platforms. Um, we're looking at a new settings framework. Uh, our uh, settings are sort of uh, ad hoc right now and very difficult to work with. Some of them are stored in an INI file. Some of them are stored in a workspace uh, called the Preferences Workspace. Some of them, if you use VA Assist, are maintainable by a GUI on top of the Preference Workspace. So we need to, to rationalize that. And um, our change browser is archaic at best. Um, and we will be fixing that. Uh, it drives us crazy, so if it drives us crazy, we know it drives our customers crazy. We're working on extensions to GLORP. Um, we right now have a tutorial in our documentation. We're working on a programmer's reference uh, to go in there with the tutorial. Um, OS, uh, Open SSL, we currently have um, some support of Open SSL, uh, but it's integrated uh, as part of the communications layer. We're going to extend that and make a, a security framework separate from the communication layer and then move up to the new Open SSL 1.0. Uh, we're looking at, uh, at how we can best do open garbage collection, or uh, I'm sorry, incremental garbage collection. Uh, if as a precursor to 64-bit support, um, we need to have a way of uh, doing garbage collection in increments. Uh, nobody wants to garbage collect over a 16 gigabyte image. And uh, some of our customers actually want to have 16 gigabyte images. Uh, we continue to, to look for hot spots in the class library. We, and this is, this is an ongoing activity we fix every release. Um, Arden talked about, uh, about moving things from C to small talk. One of, the, uh, one of the things that we have in C that's a, a really annoyance to some of our customers is our Windows Server Services uh, startup and control code. So if you want to run Windows Services with uh, VA Smalltalk, you have to have a separate executable that knows about how to do Windows Services. Um, there was a time when that was needed. It no longer is needed. It can all be done from small talk, and it all should be done from small talk, and it all will be done from small talk. Um, one, uh, one thing that our customers uh, tell us about over and over again is our install. It's not that it's bad. There's nothing, there's nothing really wrong with the install itself. The problem is that um, lots of people, when they uninstall, tend to just wipe the directory. Hey, it's fine. You know, I'm done. Wipe the directory. Well, there's more to an install than what goes in the directories on the file system. And there's more to an uninstall than just wiping the directories. So um, we want to make a single unified install, repair, uninstall that um, will uh, solve the problems that we get calls about that say, I wiped out the directory and now I can no longer install because there's all this other goo laying around that, uh, that uh, the installer thinks shouldn't be there. Um, we also are looking at um, doing some policy-based changes to our collection classes, both in the area of hashing and sorting. Um, now, right now, uh, we have, I'll say, a plethora of collection classes whose only difference is really in their hashing and sorting um, functionality. So we have uh, dictionary, we have high capacity dictionary, we have packager big dictionary, uh, and what we really want is a way to say, um, okay, this is a dictionary, I don't care how many things I'm going to put in it. If too many things go in and it starts to perform badly, either I'll change the policy or I'll set something else up in the system that will change the policy for me. 
so that uh, you know a different hashing algorithm is used, for example. And that will allow us to uh, kind of get rid of all of these uh, various and sundry nasty uh, um, white box reused classes and make it a lot easier for our customers too who don't really want to have to change the classes when the contents get large. Um, so that's, that's what we're looking at. Um, the, the, the question that's left, I guess, is how do I get a copy? Well, there's sort of been two traditional ways. You can download an evaluation copy from our website. Um, it's pretty easy. You do have to register, but uh, beyond that, uh, you can download it, or you can buy a copy. Of course, we'd love to have you buy a copy, but there are other ways, and the other ways are kind of interesting. Um, we, uh, starting with 801, we started doing development builds, public development builds. This was an, an experiment in, on our part in continuous integration and early delivery of function to our customers. You might think of them as betas, except they really don't get the same uh, level of uh, uh, regression testing and validation that beta code typically would. So uh, we did one for 801, we did two for 802, um, we're going to do two for 803. Uh, one of them was supposed to be available already, but we're having a little build problem back on the farm. So uh, I'm not able to announce its availability today, but real soon now, uh, watch our watch the VA forum. Um, we announce them on VA forum. We announce them on CompLang, Smalltalk. Uh, they're for Linux and Windows only. We don't do all of our platforms this way. Um, and we publish the fix list, of course, of what's what's in there, what's new. And we keep the documentation in sync, so when you buy, when you get a development build, you get current documentation with it. Okay, well that's interesting, but how else might I get it? Well, you could be a contributor to a Smalltalk open source project. Okay, oh, this sounds interesting. Um, what's this about? Um, we, uh, we made this announcement, I think, at ESUG last year. I think uh, Nick Gilman at the Monday night uh, meeting made this announcement. Um, we, we will donate, that's kind of a strange word, but uh, that's the word our salespeople use. We'll donate a perpetual license paid up to uh, committers working on uh, non-commercial open source projects. So, like Seaside, mm, like Peer, like anything. Um, it doesn't even have to be a VA open source project. Just an open source project. Okay, so uh, hint, uh, do do something for VA and release it on vast goodies for others to participate in. But if, if you're working on something in Squeak or, or Faro or whatever, and you would like a free copy of uh, VA Smalltalk, you're eligible. Details on our website. Um, or, finally, be an educational institution like HPI. Uh, free free uh, paid up uh, licenses, academic licenses for educational institutions, no charge. Okay, that's it. Uh, my name's John O'Keefe. That's my email address, John underscore O'Keefe at Instantiations. Write me. Questions, suggestions, um, complaints. Um, if you don't remember my email, you can go to our website and we have, uh, we have uh, email links there. So thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, thank oh, you, I John. Did a wonderful job. Oh, sorry. One suggestion, actually. Yes, thank you. Uh, about uh, 
about the question of mailing lists ver versus a forum. Uh, because uh, uh, especially we cross small talk, uh, cross small talkers to say, which we have a cross products, so we need to uh, work on whole community, whole small talk community. We need to follow all uh, all small talk uh, forums and mailing lists and everything. And mailing links to form is quite simple. Uh, many, many links. But many, ma many forums is very difficult. So I would like to urge uh, uh, VA community to uh, reconsider actually the decision to be, to be on forum. That's an interesting point that I, I actually should have addressed. As part of, uh, of the reorganization or the reinstantiations of instantiations, um, we, are, we have an opportunity to kind of readdress uh, our entire uh, public presence, I'll say. And so one of the things that uh, we are probably going to do, it's not for certain yet, is to convert the forum into a NABL mailing list. We just the biggest issue is is the migration because we want to we want to kind of move everything that we've got now in the forum if we can. Okay, thank you. So.